Hello and welcome to another demonstration. So today I'm going to be looking at using your CMDBs, your configuration management databases within ServiceNow in Ansible Tower. So you're going to be able to dynamically pull those into your inventory so you don't have to manually keep track of that stuff anymore. So starting out within ServiceNow, you go to the search bar and I want to take a look at my configuration management databases. So I'm going to go to CI class manager and I'm going to click that. So I'm using a developer instance, so it's pre-populated with a bunch of stuff. So I'm not 100% sure what's going to be there by default for regular folks. If anything, um, you're going to want to go to hierarchy manager once that loads and it shows you all of your options. So these are all the various tables that you have uh, available to you that you can pull information from. So I'm going to go to hardware and I'm going to go to network gear. I'm going to look for IP switch. So by default, there's one entry in here. I went ahead and deleted that one, added a couple more. But if I want to see them, I then click on CI list right here. So it's going to show me all of my various devices in here. So I added two switches, switch one and switch two. I put their manufacturer as Cisco, added an IP address, and just manufactured a serial number for them. So these devices actually do exist in my inventories, or rather in my lab, so I can utilize them. So once I pull them in, I can actually use them within jobs, not just in kind of a demo sort of environment. But if I want to add some additional ones, I can click new, fill out all the blanks. If I want to figure out which fields are important to me, I can come into say like the attributes section here. And so I can see all the various fields that are available. There's uh, 103 by default. I should be able to modify these, add additional fields, remove fields. Um, again, these are just the ones that come with it by default, but I can fill in all various informations and I can actually get an idea of what the uh, field names are going to be coming up in here in just a little bit. So really, that's all that's required for the ServiceNow portion. I just got to figure out what's going on there um, so that I know how to build the rest of it. So pivoting from here, this is actually pulled in with some custom YAML files. So I'm going to take a look at those really quick. So I have this in my public Git repo. It's under Ansible ServiceNow CMDB. And I've got a couple of files in here. So I'm going to take a look at this collections folder. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to look at the requirements.yml file. So if I'm using collections, uh, which is now a way for us to decouple content, so no longer is it embedded in Ansible base, it's now separated out in Ansible collections, so I can pull those collections in and manually install them, or I can basically instruct Ansible at runtime via this collections folder requirements.yml file, uh, .yaml file, it will say, hey, if this YAML requirements file exists, this YAML file, go ahead and pull it and then uh, go out and collect all the various collections required for this. And so that's what it's doing. It's grabbing the ServiceNow, ServiceNow collection. So once it's grabbed that collection, I'll take a look at this uh, Snow Switch Now YAML file. And notice that it ends in now.yaml. So that's a requirement for this file. I'm not sure why that's exactly there, but so long as it ends in the word now.yaml, it's going to be able to pull this and utilize it. So taking a look at the file, it's using the plugin servicenow.now table name. So this is an important one. So there are a myriad of tables available, right? That you can pull information from. And so I'm specifying just the IP switch one. So this means you can separate your inventories out pretty, um, pretty granularly, right? You can have an inventory just for switches, just for routers. And then even then you could probably break that down regionally if you wanted to with some additional filtering. So in here I'm doing fields. And this is going to be what information do I want to pull. So really IP address, manufacturer, and device name. So all of these fields that you specify in here, they're going to be pulled and added as host vars in the inventory for that individual, um, that individual uh, entry in there, that individual host. These will show up as variables in there. So keyed groups, this is a very interesting one. And I like this a lot because this is how you add devices dynamically to various groups. So what I'm doing is, uh, just in this example, I'm doing it based on manufacturer. So if it's a Cisco switch, it's going to be added to a group named Cisco. So really simple. Now we tie all that together. So I add it as a project and I've got it ServiceNow inventory right there. And it really does just point to my public Git repo, nothing special in there. Now I create a custom credential. 
and I named this one ServiceNow Environment Variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass over the uh, ServiceNow instance name, its password, and its username uh, dynamically at runtime. But instead of pumping them straight into the playbook, I'm actually just going to set environment variables. So while that runs, it'll um, be able to utilize those credentials uh, of this specific type right there. Uh, within my playbook. <clears throat> so I created the custom credential and again I always have a blog post to accompany this stuff so it's got copy and paste uh, options for these from my blog post so you can put them right in and then I created a custom credential or rather after I created the custom credential I added a credential as that type so it should be ServiceNow dev environment variables right you can see it using that custom credential type now I'm gonna bring it all home with an inventory so I create an inventory ServiceNow switch configuration management database. It doesn't look very special, right? Nothing insane in there. What it is, is from here you go to sources and I create a custom source, right? I've already created that one, so I'm not going to add it new, but if I take a look at it, it's using credential types of my uh, custom credential that I just created. It's using my project that I just pulled and it's utilizing the YAML file that I just saw in my public Git repo. So it executes all of that at runtime and whenever it pulls, it will dynamically pull all of the hosts in and it runs just like any other job. So when it executes, it looks like just a job completing. Once it does complete, it's got all the information here. So here are my hosts. I've got 52 and 51. If I go into the host itself, I can actually see those additional host variables that were added. If I bop back out a little bit, I can see the groups that they were added to, both added to the Cisco group. So I can go into the um, group for Cisco and I can add, I don't know, I can add the network OS type for those devices as iOS, right? So I can, I can still kind of take advantage of groups and things like that and make everything as dynamic as possible. So you can see that a lot of granularity is available here, a lot of configuration options, um, and it's not too difficult, really, uh, to be honest with you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.